Hello, hello. I am back with another video. And today I want to talk about coming from ignorance and evolving to bliss. You know how they often say ignorance is bliss? Well, this is not going to be no judgmental um, video. It's just about God becoming. Because I believe that even when you at your ignorant state of being, you still God at your lowest self, you know? God is all. So, <laughs> God gives life. God take it away, you know? God is the Alpha and the Omega, right? So sometimes in our journey, we are labeled as being ignorant. We are labeled as being too emotional. We are just chaotic, you know? You gotta understand that dark energy is chaotic energy. That's what we all stem from. And so in our journey of becoming, we are pretty much on a journey of evolving to our higher self, remembering ourselves or putting order, bringing order to our chaos. And along the journey, you know, we might have our energy in motion or our emotions ruling us. But as far as manifestation is concerned and the desires of your heart and the ability to be still and know that I'm God, you gotta sit down and get to know thyself, God, and realize that you have power over your emotions instead of your emotions ruling you, right? And this is so important when it comes to manifestation because oftentimes, like last night, I was on a live, for example, and one of the people that was there, she was saying, you know, it's been a long time. She's been waiting for, right? And oftentimes when we're waiting for like a manifestation, our emotions get the best of us. Or if we may be in a fearful situation, if we are maybe sick or discouraged, our energy emotion will get the best of us because we're looking at what is versus living in what you want it to be mentally, right? But it takes work, it takes practice, it takes you finding out for yourself what is your reason why? What is your reason why to evolve to my higher self? What is your reason why not to be ignorant all the days of your life? What is your reason why? Hopefully your reason why will be pointing back to you, but sometimes the reason why has to do with people that are outside of you maybe, that you love and you have maybe too much online to lose for them in the in the um, things that you want them to have. Maybe your children, for example, you know, maybe your, your partner, for example, like, right? So I'm gonna share this here with y'all because I'm gonna be a little transparent. Hey, knowledge is power. Hey, user 6187. So I'm gonna share this here with you all. Thank you for the uh, follow, Mr. Modos, Modes, Modes. So I'm gonna share this with you all. And I'm gonna be a little transparent, mind you. You could judge me if you want to, but when you judge me, you're gonna be judging yourself. Just to kind of let you know how my energy emotion used to be. You know, because I don't wanna come here as if I'm perfect, greater than. I had to do the work. And I wanna share with you where I come from. Now, mind you, this was 15 years ago. I'm no longer like this, and I don't really have no gutter, gutter, gutter stories. This is as gutter as it get for me. <laughs> All right, y'all listening? So about 15 years ago, I had this person, and I'm not going to say no names, but y'all going to kind of figure out who this person is in the story. But don't judge him because I love him and because he's perfect. Okay? So anyway, about 15 years ago, there was a guy in my life who um, I was no longer good with. And um, this guy, he knew how to press my so-called button. This is what I would say back then in my journey. This is the only person in my physical reality that knows how to press my button. And so now I know that I gave this person my button, but anyway. And one night, this particular person told my son that he didn't no, told me rather. I asked this person for money. It was really only like $5, y'all. 15 years ago, I didn't have $5, okay? $5 for my son to go to a field trip. The field trip was the next day, right? And so since the field trip was the next day, I wanted the $5 so I could sign the little permission slip and allow my son to go. Because as a mother, 
I am a mother first. My children are my everything, right? So, I didn't have it. I had already went in my closet and looked at the bottom of my purse, all of my purses, to see if I had some money to, you know, get the $5. I was using my own resources before I reached out to this particular person, like, right? Which happens to be my son's father, right? But we ain't calling no names, right? And so, um, anyway, I called this person and I asked this person for five dollars. I was like, could you please, uh, you know, g give five dollars for the field trip? And the person just blatantly told me no. And I felt, I took it personal as if the person was doing that to, you know, kind of like get underneath my skin, like, right? And so I'm boiling up in the inside, like, right? And I'm like, it's late at night, you know? You know how children give you a permission to sleep at two o'clock in the morning or something, like, right? And I, I didn't want to be the person to tell my son that he couldn't go on a field trip over no silly $5, you know? And so I really, really got angry, like, right? I got so angry. I got my energies that were in motion ruling me at this moment, right? Now, I've never been the type of person that goes, you know, slides no tires or nothing like this here. But, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I'm a mother. I'm a, you know, I was your wife. Like, I need five freaking dollars. Give me the five dollars for your baby. Like, right? And so I'm walking around. I got off the phone and I'm like, my son is like wanting his permission to sign. And I don't want to tell my son no, especially over no five dollars. And I'm in the kitchen, I open up the pantry in the kitchen, and baby, don't judge me now. They had some peanut butter and jelly in the in the in the cabinet, y'all. This is my ignorant stage, right? This is all I had. <laughs> they had peanut butter and jelly in the kitchen cabinet, right? And I'm pissed energetically. And I'm looking at the peanut butter. This is the peanut butter and jelly where you know how they make it with a peanut butter on one row. The jelly on another row and it's in the glass container where you can see it i grab that darn peanut butter and jelly i grabbed me some paper towels <laughs> and i was like come on we about to go by daddy we were on our way by daddy because daddy daddy say he gonna take care of everything because i didn't want to tell my son no so anyway we go over by daddy house i'm like go over by daddy and go inside and, and go you know, take care of your thing for your field trip. Daddy gonna take care of it. Let me, in my mind, I'm like saying, go let daddy tell you no. He goes up in the house, y'all. Now, this is the stupidest thing that I ever did in my life. I got out of the car and in my anger, in my energy, emotion, anger, I got that darn peanut butter and jelly and I smeared it on my ex-husband's window, y'all. The side window, the windshield window. I'm out there like a crazy ass lady. It was dark outside. A crazy ass lady smear, smearing peanut butter and jelly because my ignorance, my energy, emotion is controlling me, like, right? But here's the thing that happened up with that. I'm doing that, and now my son didn't talk to daddy. Daddy done sent him back outside, and that was my son looking at me in the midst of my anger. And at that moment, I wasn't even thinking, y'all. At that moment, when I looked at my son looking at me doing this stupid stuff, I was like, oh. Because my son said, Mom, what are you doing? He was like, Mom, what are you doing with Daddy's car? And boy, and in that moment, I'm thinking to myself, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Like, right? Because in the inside, and you know how we have those stupid thoughts about, you know, oh, but I'm a good woman. Like, why would he tell me no? I'm a good woman. Because see, see that good woman stuff? That stuff don't work energetically with the laws of attraction and stuff like, right? So here I am in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh crap, what if daddy come outside <laughs> and catch me doing this crazy stuff, this car, so I run, I run, I'm like telling myself, get in the car, get in the car, and my heart is beating fast now because now I came too. I'm no longer being ruled by my silly ass emotions that got me out there with stupid ass peanut butter and jelly doing something dumb like this here. Now I get in the car and I'm, now I'm ready to leave. Now I'm ready to get out of the neighborhood. We, we, we the peanut butter and jelly at Bonnie and Clyde, me and my son, like, right? So I'm, I'm going fast to get out of the neighborhood because I don't really want daddy to see me doing this because daddy, daddy is a man. <laughs> 
<laughs> Daddy could shake me real hard, like, right? So now I done got worked up and scared, and I'm leaving. And so we get to a red light, and I'm looking straight as if the red light is just so serious. Like, right, I do not want to look over to my son. My son, 15 years ago, he was like maybe about, um, what, like nine, eight or nine years old, like, right? And he's like, Ma. And I said, yes. And I'm looking forward. He's like, Ma, look at me. And I turned around and I looked at him. He said, Ma, Ma, don't, don't ever do that no more. Don't ever do nothing like that no more, Ma. And I looked at him, now I'm humiliated. And he says to me, do you promise, Ma? And I looked, oh my God, this story making me emotional. And I looked at him and I said, yeah, baby, Mama promise. Mama promise. And so I drove, and I think I went and drove by my mom's house or somebody's house to go get the little five dollars or whatever, but I wanted his daddy to do it, you know? I wanted his daddy not to tell him no, and it kind of bothered me that, <laughs> that I was just, I was just, in my mind at that time, I was a good freaking woman. I was taking care of my children, and I wanted the best for my children, and for him to tell me no, I felt like he was trying to get underneath my skin, trying to press my button and, 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 and fool with my emotions. But it was that night, because of the love, because of the reason why that I have for my children, because that reason why Trump, everything else, that night, that night, he no longer had that so-called button that I thought that he was the only person that could press in my physical reality, right? I took my button back. I took my power back. I took my emotion back from him that night because I had made a promise to my son. And so in taking my, 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 my power back from him, any interaction moving forward from the moment he was nine years old, even if I wanted to get those energies bubbled up and do something silly, I would... What? You know? And I didn't know nothing about no breathing techniques. I didn't know nothing about no meditation back then. I didn't know nothing but the fact that I had a reason why and I had to get my emotions in check. I had to not have this man be the only man in my physical reality that had my button and knew how and when to press my button to get a reaction out of me. I had to work on me. It was no longer what he did. It was what I can do to become a better person in my physical reality. So anytime he would press my button, I would take a deep breath. I would walk away. I'd figure out a way to get on the other side of that emotion to get me in check. And so oftentimes in our physical reality, I don't want to say oftentimes, you or everyone, you or everyone you see pushed out. And people are responding to you based upon the way that you are thinking and, and expecting them to respond, God. So for me, I expected him in that moment in our life to push my button. And he was there. And this was the button and he was just pressing it and pressing it and pressing it every time. Because that was my thought that I was putting out to my subconscious mind that, okay, this character right here, he... It's going to be the one to press my button. Yeah. Yeah, because he is the one that likes to get a response out of me. Maybe it's because I didn't want to stay married. Maybe it's because he still liked me. I could come up with all kinds of reasons why. But this was a scene I was creating for that particular person in the physical reality. So he had to press the button. Until I created a new scene for him not to press the button. Or even a new scene that said if he pressed the button... Nothing happens because the batteries don't work no more. <laughs> or better yet, even better scene than that. I'm going back energetically and take my button from him. <laughs> yeah, because nobody in the physical reality should be able to shake me like that. Nobody. And so in doing that, you learn then, once, because when it's tied to somebody that you really kind of like or maybe had feelings for or maybe they're like um, in a hierarchy of a company that maybe a manager or something where they kind of are over you. When it's tied to somebody like that, <laughs> it really is powerful in that you can use that same technique 
for somebody that you cared about or somebody that was over you. Once you learn to master the emotions over that hierarchy person in corporate America or over that hierarchy person that used to be a spouse for you, once you learn how to master your emotions when it comes to that person, everybody else is easy. <laughs> you could actually begin to start mastering your emotions with everybody. Look, look, my, I used to have a husband who had a button of mine. I took my button from him, and you think you going to press a button that I ain't even give to you, reflection? <laughs> Just random reflection on the road, random reflection at the store, random reflection on TikTok. Oh, no, none of y'all going to get the button. Because my, my ex taught me how to master my energy in motion. So if I could master it with him and he was the real, real one that I loved at that time, baby, I could do it with you too easily, effortlessly. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Okay, you said something that, that you think will get under my skin. No, baby, I done already took my butt back from him. So that means you ain't getting it. I ain't giving it out no more. You should have caught me back in, let's see, 1991 when I was emotionally out of control. You should have caught me back then, but now I done figured it out. You can't, you can't penetrate, you know? You can't take my life, at least I lay it down. Then if I lay it down, I know how to pick it back up again. You can't take my emotions, at least I give you the button. And if I gave you the button, I know how to take the button away from your ways when I'm ready. Because I'm God. I haven't figured that out. So you should have caught me back then when it was ignorance. But now I'm in my blissful state of being. <laughs> yeah, I evolved from ignorance to bliss. And I'm not ashamed of my little peanut butter and jelly moment. No, I'm not. I can laugh at it now. But also I can look back at my moment and I can say, God darn it, girl, I'm so proud of you. Look at you. Remembering that you're God. Look at you. It could have been something worse that you did. It could have turned out even worse than what it had. But you made it. Look at you holding steadfast and firm to your promise to your son that you promised you would never do nothing ignorant, nothing stupid again. But most importantly, look at, look, look at what you're doing for yourself. Look at the promise and the work you did for yourself that ended up helping you later on in life when it came to meditation. That ended up helping you later on in life when it came to manifestation. That ended up helping you later on in life when it came to your peace, your love, your bliss, your joy, your happily ever after, your ability to now live in the end. <laughs> Look at your life now. You see? So this is why, one of the reasons of many, why it's so important to be able to master those emotions. And going back to what I was saying about, you know, oh, but I'm a good woman. I want to teach you something about, yeah, because I know a lot of you, I do a lot of consultations, and I know a lot of women say that all the time. Oh, I'm a good woman. But I'm a good woman. Let me tell you something. That's something that we collectively need to erase out of our mind because it's something that we learned when we were maybe in kindergarten. But we grown women. We grown ladies now. We grown goddesses now. Ain't no such thing, baby. We not in kindergarten no more. What you expect the universe to do? Move your little apple up to another level because you were good in class today? No, it don't work like that. Mm -mm. Because see, people, when they're talking about relationships and tra trying to attract the opposite partner, they say, but, but I've been a good woman. No. No. All good and perfect gifts for, come from God already. We already know that you have some good in you, God. We already know that. But are you worthy? And if you're worthy, are you sending the signal out there that you feel worthy? How about you? How about you answer that question instead? Instead of saying, oh, but I'm a good woman. Why would he do this to me? Ask yourself, wait, hold up. Am I a woman that feel worthy? Because if I was a woman that felt worthy, this would not be happening to me. You see, that's the signal that, that's, that's being re responded to. You think that the universe is trying to respond for you being good. A good girl in school, you know, a good team player at work. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you know, it don't work like that. No, 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 no. A good girl at home. 
Yeah, a good girl in a relationship, a good mama. No, no, no. We everybody has good in them. But not everybody has the ability to feel worthy in them. See, that's what separates us all. So instead of trying to work on being good, work on that self-concept when you feel worthy. You feel worthy, God. That's what you want to work on instead. Because it's not about that. I was good back then. I was a good little homely little wife. I was a good little mama. But at the same time, on that night, 50 years ago, I didn't have $5 for my baby for a field trip. <laughs> because at that moment in my life, I wasn't feeling worthy, y'all. It wasn't about me being good. I was in college. I was a homeowner. I was taking care of my family. I wasn't out running in the street like some of my girlfriends was doing. I wasn't drinking at that moment. I was into Jesus. I was praying and fasting in church and stuff in that moment. Oh, I was good. But was I worthy? Was I feeling worthy? That's the difference. And so along the journey, you learn these things. You learn about the signal that you're putting out energetically as far as your energies or emotions or concern. And you have to one day face those things that you were putting out. You have to face that ignorant side of you, God. Cause this is part of being God. God embodies the totality of itself. God is both male and female. God is gonna be in your ignorant stage, your ignorance all the way to your bliss. And so in, in, in even accepting your so-called twin or your dynamic relationship, the real twin is going to be you accepting all parts of you, you making peace with all parts of you to get to know you because that's what the journey is really all about, getting to know thyself. It don't matter what level you're on. It don't matter if you're on crack. It don't matter if you're on drugs. You're just trying to get a little higher. You're just trying to experience God. It don't matter but love every part of the journey because it was purposeful. It was you being in class, learning a life lesson. It was you winning because you never lose God. You didn't come forth to lose in physical form. You came forth to win. And in that moment, it might seem like it's shitty. It might seem like it's chaotic. It might seem like, oh, but I'm good though. In that moment, I've been in many of those moments. I've been in them. I don't talk about them because I understand how the laws of the universe work and how the law of attraction work and how my words should be impeccable for the things that I'm wanting and not speak constantly on the things that I don't want to revisit me in my physical form. So I don't want to go into the little past and the memories of these things. And it's going to be the last time I mention this story. But I did it for one of my reflections to let you know I... I used to do stupid stuff too. <laughs> yeah, I used to. I used to kind of want to go off, kind of like, you know, not the fighting kind of go off. I only did the peanut butter and jelly kind, but I did something. <laughs> I evolved from a place and you can too. And all of those chaotic emotions that underneath that neutral state of being, they're purposeful in your journey. They're purposeful, but you got to go through them. And while you're going through them, you appreciate that, oh, well, well, the first time when I was real, real young and I went off, man, I went off on somebody and I maybe, I don't know what you, what's the worst you could do. Maybe it blew up somebody's house. Next time, I only just struck a match and I just blew the match out and I didn't do anything. That goes to progress. <laughs> Congratulate yourself for the progress because it takes time sometimes for you to have to, because you're going to revisit it. If you still have emotions tied to it, you're going to keep on revisiting that thing because the universe, your subconscious mind will think you want more of that thing. And so it's going to give it to you again in different characters, like, right? So had I not dealt with that particular person that I gave my little button to that was able to press my buttons, had I not dealt with him pressing my button, then my next lover would have been pressing my buttons, and then the next one would have been pressing, and everybody in my physical reality would be pressing buttons. Women and men, they don't seem to understand this because this is something deeply rooted in the subconscious mind. You are constantly getting the same person. Just a different name, the same energy. At least you passed the test 
of the emotions that's assigned to that particular person. So if you got a beater <laughs> and you don't get yourself off of the, the feeling sorry for yourself, low self-concept, everybody pushes or fights me type frequency, no self-love type, type frequency. If you don't get off that frequency, then you're going to meet another person that's going to be punching you. If you got a cheater, if you don't get off of that low self-concept where well, I ain't worthy over here, then you're going to find another cheater. But it's just going to take you a long time to find out he's been cheating on you. He's going to cheat a little differently. But you're going to find it because you're attracting it. Because you never mastered the emotion behind it and never did the self-work and took your little button, so to speak, back from them, play, them people and turned from this ignorant place of being to your bliss and that is simply tied to the way that you feel because how you feel God in the physical reality it matters I'm talking about how you feel to the core of you I'm talking about how you feel in the subconscious mind of you it matters I'm talking about how you feel your with your habitual thoughts it matters thought by thought by thought by thought from the moment somebody asks you a question, that little small thought that you have, from the moment if you have low self-esteem supposedly and you put on clothes and you go outside and you see somebody that see you and you and you have a thought that, oh, 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 I wonder if they notice how fat I am. That is the, the subconscious habitual thought that I'm talking about. That little sneaky link that get in that nobody else hears outside here. We're just responding to what is going on that you are telling us in here. So of course, now when that person walks out because they already have low self-esteem and they're already putting out habitual thoughts that other people might think that they're fat, that might think that they're gross, then we all have to obey you, God, because that's what you put out. That's your order and your word, your habitual thought. It cannot come back to you void, God. You put it out there. That's the reason why you got to go in there and change that thing. You're the only person that can change that, God. It's not the ex. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not you sitting up there being good and not, not being good enough. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's are you worthy. It's how you feel. Do I feel sexy? Do I feel delicious? Do I feel appetizing? Do I feel in love with myself? Do I feel whole? Do I feel complete? Do I feel abundance? Do I feel like I'm a life force? Do I feel healthy? Do I feel wealthy? Do I feel prosperous? Do I feel like a magnet? Do I feel invincible? Do I feel these things? If I don't feel these things, and if you know you don't feel your, these things, you ask yourself, God, Show me what it feels like to experience love. What does joy feel like? What does bliss feel like? What does the ability to master my emotion feel like? What does prosperity feel like? What does it feel like to be sexy? What does it feel like to be healthy and your universe, your subconscious mind going to give you a feeling, God, and you got to milk it. You got to learn how to deliver yourself from your own ignorance, God, because ain't none of your reflections, they're reflection of you. Ain't none of them got the power to save you, God. You all you got. <laughs> they don't have the power to save you. You got to save yourself. You're the God that all the people in your kingdom been waiting for when you're going to return, Jesus. Yeah, because we are the people in your reality. They're looking for a savior. They're looking for a savior and you're it. You're it. So, so you and your kingdom, you, you can't be looking to and fro for a savior yourself. That's crazy. The people in your kingdom waiting for you to get on your throne again. And when you're on your throne, you are not an emotional wreck. You're not ignorant on your throne. Your energies are in balance. Your emotions are in balance on your throne. You're not looking outside of yourself no more when you're on your throne. No. You're experiencing bliss. Because then when you're on your throne, 
your so-called enemies, they like your footstools. Now they're at your command now because now you know how to manipulate energy in your mind and make them yield to you, God. Now you know that you are the magnet and you know how to draw them to you to do what you say do. Yeah, because it's your kingdom, God. And so all the while, even when you were ignorant, it was purposeful for your blissful moment, which is nigh for you, God, the moment when you sit on your throne and just admire the work that you've done in your kingdom to get everything in order. And you got it in order, thought by thought, and, and now everybody is like, whew, look at God. <laughs> look at God. That was so beautiful. Let's see, I, I was ignoring the comments because I wanted to get my point across for my YouTube channel. Let me go back and see who all came up in here. Good afternoon, pretty. That's why I left off. Pamela, thank you. You're gorgeous. Hey, hey, Mr. Blue. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, Quincy. Thank you for following me. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings to you, God. Beautiful auntie. Oh, that's so cool. You're welcome. Hey, all. Oh, didn't expect you to keep you see you th oh to see you this morning oh okay yeah 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 i said i was gonna come on about nine o'clock i actually was a little bit late pamela you was laughing at me with my peanut butter and jelly huh yes i've been there oh you've been there too pamela i'm glad i didn't miss this i didn't get my notification oh okay i'm glad you're here too i'm glad you're here too demo let's see i feel you sis your wellness hey how you doing your wellness thank you for being here our emotions can take us there sometimes yeah that breath, that breath helps so much. The breath of life and that breathing, you graduate with that breathing and you understand, oh, my breath was so important because it allowed oxygen to be delivered to my brain. It allowed my thoughts to flow. It allowed me to become one mind, body, and soul. That's why meditation and deep breathing is so important. It's so important. So that was my chaotic moment though. But I didn't know nothing about no breathing then. I was angry. Because in my mind, my law for me was, I'm a good woman. You don't do this to a good woman. You don't do this to a child. That was, it. That was just what my thought was in my mind. And that's how I reacted. That's, that was my thing that, that I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does help so much. Oh my, yes, I started learning this. Yeah, at the end of last year. Yeah. Hey, Monique, thank you for being here. Hey, tiny baby. That's an amazing story. I experienced that with my ex-wife. Oh my gosh, she knew she could press my buttons. Yeah, true. It's like, and that's what really I was talking about, my ex-husband. It's like that's the person because they know they knew you. You know how in the biblical text they talk about Adam knew Eve because he went inside of her to get to know her. They know the depths of you, the way you act, the th the way you kind of like think. They know what you were programmed as, so they know how to press that button but but the gone are those days we gotta we gotta renew our mind and no longer be that person that they once knew and, and confuse the hell about them that oh oh you think you pressing the button no baby the button don't work no more i'm not that person no more you can press it if you want to you're wasting your time <laughs> because behold all things have been renewed over here <laughs> I thought it once not robbery to be equal with God. And so with being equal to God, I know now that I have the power to manipulate the energy like a God. And so I've manipulated my energy where you can't even phase me no more, baby. You could try if you want to, but I got a reason why. And now I'm better in that area in my journey. I'm better now. And you can't get me at my lowest point. You can't. And, and, and so and I feel so proud of me and my journey. And I want you to feel proud of yourself because really at the just of it all, when I'm, you know, alone, I don't talk like this here on TikTok. But alone in my inner thoughts for my journey, I say to myself, girl, you are F un -F with your energy. You are un -F And that's where I want you to be, un -F with your energy, unequitable with your mental state of being. Because see, when a person get up here and here, 
They got you. They can play all kind of games with you. Don't let nobody get up in here and manipulate your energy, God. Not in your head. Be unequitable with your energy. And it's going to help you. I ain't telling you nothing that ain't going to help you in all areas of your life. Yeah, I can relate 100. I give it. Yeah, Monique said, period. Speak it. Yeah. Yeah, I hate to hang it, Tanya. Oh my God, I'm working on feeling worthy now. Um, this was for me. Yeah, please upload this to YouTube also. Yes, I will. I will. Thank you, Pamela. I desire to do so. Yeah, we all do, but we have our little stumbling blocks. Hey, Anne, thank you for being here. I didn't know you was up in here. I also needed this again today. <laughs> yeah, at some point in our life, we all, we all do. I love your content. Hey, the Celestial 19. Thank you. Thank you. It's my first time seeing you here. You sure did. Yeah, I, I'm glad I was able to join on the love train. Thank you for being here. But yeah, we all need this. We all need to come to peace with this part of ourselves. Seriously, for your manifestation. Because if you ain't feeling worthy now, if you got people triggering you now, just think about when you have a manifestation that you want. Then you're going to be the type of person that's going to be always triggered. Let's say, for example, you want a manifestation of um, maybe a partner. You're going to be the type of person that's going to be in... You ever seen those TikToks where people see somebody maybe getting married and you go through the comments and you'll see somebody saying, hello, God, it's me again. Or they'll be like, um, I guess always a, a bridesmaid, never a bride. Or they'll be like, when is my turn going to come? In so many words, they're really saying, this triggered me because I looked at it and instead of allowing it to give me joy and love and bliss and allowing me to milk the overflow of their love, what it did for me was it made me think about the fact that my manifestation is not here. So it brought out another type of emotion inside of me. And really, by it bringing out another emotion inside of me, energetically, it told my subconscious mind to slow up on my manifestation because she ain't learned a darn lesson yet. She ain't mastered her emotions just yet. She don't feel worthy just yet. And so you don't want to do that. You want to release the resistance and allow and not let things move you. You want to be able to milk the love from other people knowing that their love is abundant. And so let me get some of that overflow. Let me, like in the biblical text, oh, let me just touch the hem of his garment because I know he's flowing with these healing powers. So if I could just touch and get some of his overflow, then I'll be made whole. So just like the people that want the relationship, oh, if I could just milk the moment of her saying I do to her partner, then maybe, some of that love energy will flow through me because I'm just energy and energy is not created nor destroyed. It simply transforms. So I'm going to let some of that juice transform over here. And I'm going to say I do in my mind too. And I'm going to imagine that that's me over there in this video. Matter of fact, I'm going to imagine my video now since this person gave me this thought. Matter of fact, because TikTok showed me this thing here, it must mean that mine is on the way. Oh, I'm so excited. TikTok is showing me what my subconscious mind is thinking. Oh, okay. I'm ready. I'm starting to feel worthy. <laughs> they had a choice to think those things, but they chose to think, hey, God, it's me again. <laughs> We're so free that we could choose bondage within our mind. We could choose the lowest frequency thought that is available, and we could milk that one instead, and we could be our own stumbling block instead. That's how free we all call. Yeah. Grand Rising. Hey, Bob. I thank you for being here. What's your YouTube name? Just me. Uh, my YouTube name is Song of the Earth Publishing. If you go to my profile picture, though, it's an easy way to get there. There's a black uh, triangle that'll take you right there to my um, YouTube channel. And I upload my videos underneath the video tab. I'll upload this one when I get off of here. Yes, sir. Oh, somebody asked a question, but they jumped. Let me go back. Can you explain the breathing to me? <laughs> I am V say like a god. Child, I'm late. Nubian, yeah, you are late. <laughs> the breathing. So the breath. We talked about that in the um 
the video before the last on my youtube channel i posted it it was about the different it's called the different levels of meditation you should look at that um video miss Bulba. and in it i was talking about the breathing the breathing really helps you release stress it helps you become one with mind body and soul it helps you calm down it helps you remember who you are and so that's most often than not what's going on when a person gets really upset and they take a deep breath like right before they're about to fight or or hit a wall or go off so to speak it really is a thing that calms them down that deep breath they'll be like <gasps> but really they just they was practicing meditation if you pay attention i'm a people watcher i'm an introvert if you pay attention that's what energetically just happened they calm down they calm down in that moment that's why breathing is so important it's so important and so in that video, that'll really be beneficial for you to learn because we talked about that being the first step, breathing. And then the next step is, is practicing stillness. Then the next step is practicing um, with your imagination and quantum jumping. And then the final step is imagination, quantum jumping, and looping it. And looping it allows you to conjure up more energy for whatever it is that you're trying to manifest or bring forth in physical reality. And it allow it to come back to you faster because you looped it over and over. It's like you conquered up energy to make it get bigger and bigger energetically. Because this is what it's all about. The whole life is about energy, frequency, and vibration. So you want to conjure up a whole bunch of energy. And when you conjure up enough energy, that is what they call so-called divine timing. Is when you're in alignment with that energy, when it trumps all of those bad old experiences and that's when your subconscious mind yield to you the manifestation in physical form when the energy is just really really big bigger than your old thoughts so to speak yeah so yeah grand rising hey um who's this uh rose rosho rosho i think that's how you said it powerful message thank you Anne. i say daily every cell in my body is worthy of love happiness wealth peace prosperity and wisdom oh yeah yeah and tell and those are some beautiful words tell your tell your subconscious mind to show you all of that too show you all of that show me show me love show me happiness show me wealth show me peace and feel that thing and so you now will know what that feeling feels like and so during your day you could just feel that feeling Doing your ride. I'm about to post a video when I was driving. I took a road trip yesterday. I was driving. Driving, you're in alpha mode. So when you're driving on a trip, like my whole trip back, I was in the car and I was milking just a peaceful, perfect, energetic feeling. And it felt so good. And I was listening to music and I was imagining that people were singing the music to me. You know, like lifting myself energetically up, like seeing, seeing um, how, uh, you know, being beautiful or or being um, fine. And then they had this song about she got a she got a little butt. So what, like, right? And so, like, just laughing and just having a good time with the music, as if I was dancing in my mind, and you know, to that particular song while I was in the car, because it's kind of like a bounce song. But I really like it because I got a little butt. So what? <laughs> and so it kind of resonated with me. But I had so much fun in this car. You couldn't tell me nothing. Like your subconscious mind is wide open and is ready to receive good thoughts while you're driving, while you're taking a shower, right when you're drifting off to sleep at night, when you wake up in the morning. These are precious moments. When you were a baby from zero to seven, your subconscious mind is wide open, just ready to receive whatever command you've given it. So you might as well, we ain't babies zero to seven no more. So you might as well, when you do it, when you're in the shower, while you're driving, when you're drifting off to sleep, when you're waking up, Using that time when you know that it's open, especially if you're not meditating, use that time when you know it's open to give it some good feeling thoughts, to let it feel what worthy feels like so it can bring a worthy environment to you where things are being drawn to you instead of people being repelled away from you when you're having the so-called good luck versus you having the so-called bad luck. But it's really just you and your signal that you're putting out. 
Yeah, because that matters. Yeah. Let's see. Themo says, so should we mainly reserve our emotions to manipulate our energy, our desires, and well-being? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because if you give them to, to like, people that you think are clicking your buttons, you're just really recreating more people to click your button. And so you got to get to that place where, where okay, you got in your kingdom, you're on your throne, and you it's almost like you're saying, you're not worthy of my attention. You're not worthy because I don't want more of you. I don't want more of that experience. You're not worthy. Get off the throne. It's like you're denying the experiences. It's the game of life. So that, that means when you sit it up there and you're comfortable with that girlfriend that calls you because she she know you the person that like to listen and entertain. When you really get real with yourself and your energies, emotion, and how you feel mattering, one day you're going to decide that you ain't answering her phone call no more because you're not worthy to speak to me with all of that chaotic energy that you bring to me because I'm on another level. I'm on my throne. Oh, you over there, you're worthy for me to give my attention to because you're sending out a signal of love. I want more of that. Come, come, let him come to the throne. Oh, 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 you right there. You have an abundance frequency about yourself. I'm going to pay attention to you. I'm going to give my attention to you, your well-being your abundance. Why? Because I want more of you in my experiences. That's really what you're doing. So you, you start, you're weeding out the ones that are that, 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 that not serving you in your kingdom no more, God. You got to. If you want to go to other places in life, you got to. If you want to graduate, because you're, you're actually in class here in, in this thing called earth, gra graduating to different levels of consciousness within yourself. So you got to keep going, God. And so don't get weary in, in, in letting them go because guess what? You're going to meet some more. You're going to meet people that's on your frequency, wherever it is you're going mentally. They're waiting for you. But you, you hanging out with that girlfriend that keep telling you about what so-and-so did. She want to talk to you about everybody outside of her because inside of her, it's chaotic and she don't want to go up in there and deal with her own stuff. <laughs> Matter of fact, even deeper than that, you created her because a part of her once was inside of you. Yeah, you and her vibed on the same frequency once upon a time, but you got to graduate from that frequency. See, we're supposed to really be like little, little birds in the air, being free-flowing beings, right? Having no attachments because we are on a journey, an individual journey within ourselves. That's why the biblical text will teach you about not attaching yourself to so many things, so many people. Imagine that if you attach yourself and stay with, in physical form, everybody that you ever knew. <laughs> like from kindergarten all the way up to when your lifespan ends, maybe in your 80s and 90s, and you still attached to all, you were still attached to all of them. You knew how all of them died. You knew all of their issues and problems. You just knew everything because you stayed attached to them and you never wanted to let nothing go. Imagine all the grief and stuff you beat and went through. Being attached. Imagine all the hardships. Imagine all the pain that you know that each and one of them. How, imagine how that would affect your mental God staying attached to all of those energies. That's almost like watching the Channel 15 News on repeat, just over and over, digesting negative stuff. The problems of the world. That shouldn't be something you should be subscribing to God. Unsubscribe to all of the foolery. Unsubscribe to not all of the things that don't serve you in a peaceful, loving, joyful, blissful state of being because you came here for expansion, remembrance that you're God, not hindrances. Yeah. So I decided to hold on a little longer, goddess. <laughs> Good for you. I'm so proud of you, Nubia. You better be holding on. Don't let go, baby. I am energy forever. I love you. Sending love and positive vibes your way. I have learned so much from you. Oh, I'm so happy about that. That's good to know. I am energy forever. Hey, oh, hey, Emmanuel. Truth. 
Hello, Barbara, 777. Hi, thank you for being here. Hi, Kel. Thanks for the heart. Thanks for joining. Let's see. Blessings. Hey, A. Wash. Thank you for the follow, A. Wash. Oh, yes, I will start telling my subconscious mind to show me. Yeah, yeah, you got to do that for it because you want the thought and the feeling. Remember, thought is electric. The feeling from the heart is magnetic. So you want the electromagnetic energy to work for you to create the spark and so it can give life to that thing we're trying to bring life to that thing thought by thought by thought feeling by feeling by feeling by feeling put them two together and you got your reality because if you look at your reality and you be honest with yourself it's a combination of your feelings and your thoughts in physical form that's how you know this stuff works you thought everything up in your physical reality. You, you created your own stumbling blocks or you created your own prosperity. Look around. Look at your car. Look at your bank account. Look at your relationships. Look at it all. And you would even say it, God, because you would say, I know he wasn't no good. I know she was a cheater. I knew that was going to happen. I knew this. I knew that. Yeah, yeah, of course you do. Because you created it. You created it through thought, spoken word, feeling it, yeah, giving your attention to it, allowing it to grow, because you thought it over and over and over and over again. All you got to do is do the opposite. All you got to do is do the opposite to fix it. So now since you know that you create chaotic stuff, God, by default, change your mind and be an intentional creator on purpose. Because that's your birthright. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. I like that. Thank you so much for that. I think we got, well, I think we got married in my dreams. Oh, really? And I don't even know your name. Let's see what your name is. Kaven? Kaven, I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> well, I don't remember saying I do. But if you remember it, that means you thought it. If you felt it in your heart, guess what? It happened. It happened, babe. <laughs> That's funny. Thanks for the uh, teaching. You are so welcome, Miss uh, Trice B. Yeah. Jeez. You're really giving us today. This is a lot. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I mean, just as long as you can digest it. Just digest that thing and use it, you know? You know, use it, apply it. You know, in the beginning of my journey, I would just listen, 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 listen. But there has to be a point where you you can push everybody away and be like, okay, I'm gonna apply what I learned about this, and I'm gonna see how this thing worked for me, and I'm gonna tweak it my way because your way is gonna be the way. I'm just sharing my way and how I look at things, and you could you can get nuggets and gems from my way and create a better way. And I want you to do that. A real leader really wants you. To, to to be better than them like you know to excel there's no you know jealousy or you trying to them trying to hold you back you know because some people in the physical reality they be wanting you to be prosperous and be good so to speak but don't pass them up no pass me up pass me up you especially if you're younger than me especially if you've been knowing this here longer than me you should be passion passing me up I don't care if you just met me and you uh, passed me up already. T sh tell me so I can be happy for you. <laughs> because I want you to win. When you win energetically, I win anyway too. So we shouldn't even be, be holding people back. We should want people to know all the little nuggets and gems for their life. Because we are collective consciousness. At the end of the day, you put us energetically all together and you got God <laughs> you got God so why hold some other God back learn this thing be better get get it get whatever it is that you're desiring your happiness might not look like my happiness it might be bigger it might have bells and whistles on it more bells than I have and that's okay that's beautiful let me see your bells and your whistles or just write it down in the comments so I could be like oh wow you did that, God? Look at you letting your kingdom come. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Who's this sweet B? Hey, sweet B. Thank you for being here. Hey, friend. Just stop by to show you love. I appreciate the love. I feel it. I feel it. It's overflowing. Yeah. Thank you so much, sweet B. Okay. So, I think I answered. Prophets come along to confirm what you already know. Yeah. Yeah. Because we really, if you really get honest with us all collectively, we all already know this. We all are God in physical form, remembering. So God in his highest state of being already knew, come in physical form, down to 10% of brain capacity, now he's falling from knowing. So then when he or she have experiences of people speaking, something that they think is profound, they say, and they begin to listen and they say, wow, and oh, I was just thinking that, or they're resonating with that particular message, that's just them remembering that they already once knew this. And they're looking at this person like, who are you? And, and oh, you're, you're tapped in. Yeah, I'm tapped into the same thing you're tapped into. I just may remember a little bit more than what you do at this moment. That's what that's all about. And so then we'll have these so-called deja vu moments. Yeah. Because we remember, like, oh, I think I've been here before. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, God. You've been here before on your way down to the, the human experience, all the way down to 10% of your brain capacity. Yeah, you, you, you've been the 90 already. You've been the 80, you've been the 60, you've been the 50% of it. You've been, yeah, yeah. It's time to go back, though, God. Come on, come on. We're going this way now. This is the season. We're going this way, God. So come on, we got to increase... The 10% of the brain capacity, we're going back up to 100%. We're going back up to the throne. Yeah, you want to go back to the throne. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. My life has made an amazing turn for the good since I've stumbled on one of your videos. I'm so happy for you. You're a gift. Bless you. Hey, Renee. Well, Seth, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's beautiful. I was in transition already when I found you, but baby, you pushed the gas. I'm so thankful for you. Oh, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your energy, your time, listening. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your journey, and I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you wanting more for you. You know, and, and even even the comments, they really help me. You know, I get emails. I started off this here live reading reviews from my website. And I get emails from my newsletter of people that are subscribed to my website. Even on YouTube, I get comments over there. And I'm constantly reading the things, you know. And you all are part of my reason why now in my journey, why I continue to come live and continue to inspire and motivate other people and do consultations. With all that I do in my physical reality, I still come to it because it gives life to me too, you know, because I'm on a journey too. And to see people and hear people telling me how much I've inspired me, it's like, man, you girl, you, you can't give up. You can't put this here on the side. I quit my job in corporate America because I love this. This felt more rewarding to me than being in transmission engineering, a feeling that they, I could never experience there, dealing with drawings and technical analytical type stuff. So doing this with my heart chakra open for the, my passion of the things that I do, plus other people, willingness to learn and being able to look at them and be proud of them on their journey, that's way more rewarding, baby. And it's, that, me, that feels to me as if I'm in alignment. That feels to me as if I have the ability to tap into like this, 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 this greatest power the, the, the power of being able to inspire, <laughs> the power of being able to tap into source energy, my, my super consciousness, the power to understand that I'm receiving downloads, like all of my lives, I kid you not, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about tomorrow. Every night when I go to sleep, I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about on tomorrow. But in a dream, in a vision of the night, my downloads come to me and y'all be saying, oh, wow. And sometimes I'll say out loud, it's not me being braggadocious. Sometimes I will say out loud, oh, that was good. Because I'm on a journey to receiving information from that higher state of being, my super consciousness, reminding me of stuff that I once knew and forgot. So it's, it's like, 
I'm a student too. I'm forever a student too. And so that y'all help me keep going. Like if I was energetically out of alignment, I, all I gotta do is open up my email and be like, man, Monique out there, Monique doing it. I, I could do it too. I inspired Monique, I inspired Pamela, I inspired Miss Barbara. I inspired Joe, I inspired Emmanuel, I inspired, I gotta continue to inspire because this, this thing is working. Get off of this frequency, get, get back on the drone, God. It can be my reminder, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I thank you. I thank you too is what I'm saying. Yeah, may, many peace be unto you. Thank you, Dark. Thank you, I think. Oh, look at my tray. Trey, you just getting here? <laughs> I've been on here for a while, Trey. Or oh, you was being quiet. That go my Trey. Trey is one of my supporters. He always commenting when I post something. I can count on my, my Trey. He gonna comment, he gonna send a little hard, he gonna send something. And I really appreciate you for being here and being um, a supporter on my TikTok. I never met him in the physical reality, but he, um, he supports me a lot. Beautiful lady. Why do you laugh sometimes while you talking? Because of, hey, Reese, because I, that's my joy. You want me not to laugh? <laughs> that's my joy. That's me. That's part of, uh, I guess, I'm, something, a, a habitual thing that I do. I could frown. I could complain. But I'm happy that I have laughter and joy in me. It reminds me of the little girl inside of me. And because sometimes I love, I'm so caught up into my subconscious and my human imagination that sometimes on purpose, when the camera not on, I act like a little girl. And I talk to the little girl inside of me and I ask her how she's doing. And I like today, when I get off of here, I'm going to ask her what she want to do besides work out. I make sure that she's happy. Because I believe that we all have a little girl inside of us, a little girl, a little boy that we should make peace with because that's ultimately ourselves that we carry on from it, lifetime after lifetime, dimension after dimension. We might think that that's um, a husband's job or girlfriend's job, but no, it's you and your yourself. And so, yeah, I laugh, I play with her. Sometimes I'd be sexy and seductive with her. <laughs> I'd be, you know, the grown woman teaching her femininity. I do all these things. I laugh at myself. I talk to myself. I am myself, best friend. When you gonna start laughing, Reese? <laughs> when you gonna start laughing? Just laughing because it's in you. I could only give you something that's inside of me. You could only give me what's inside of you. So I have a little laughter in there. I got a little love in there. I got a little consciousness in there. I got a little sexy lady up in there. I got a little goofiness in there. I got wisdom in there. I got, <laughs> I got a whole lot of good stuff in there. And I'm only giving you what's in there. <laughs> no, keep the laugh. It's energizing. And one of the things that draws me to you, I love it. Thank you, Anne. I love it. Yeah, that's it's, I guess it's a habit at this point. Now that you said it, I realize that I do it a lot, but I'm not going to stop it, though. <laughs> Hello, Darcy White. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate all of you that stayed here on this live. But I'm about to end it now at this point. If y'all don't have any questions, I can feel your radiance. Oh, thank you, babe. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's powerful. That's powerful. Yeah, people could only give you what's inside them. That's all I got. Because life happens through you. It happens through you. And so, this is all I got, y'all. All I got is consciousness and, and laughter and positive thinking and, you know, and living your best life. All I got, that's going to be my message. I'm going to constantly tell you you God. I'm going to constantly tell you you love. I'm going to constantly tell you you here to remember. It's just going to be different titles and we're going to apply it to your everyday life. I'm going to constantly tell you you're almost there. I'm going to constantly tell you keep vibrating higher. That's going to be my message. So if you don't want to see me no more, you got the message right there. You God. You'll be doing half anything. That's the kind of stuff I'm going to tell you because that's all the stuff that's in here. 
That's all that's in here. <laughs> Hi, I'm B. I just want us all to keep winning. Yes, me too. I love you, God. I love you too, Pamela. I was going to say the same thing. Just be beautiful. Um, or oh, just a beautiful feeling as soon as I come in. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. And that's the energy you feel from people, you know. That's, that's the aura per se. And so that's why leading back to my, my message is that's why it's so important that you feel worthy. That's why it's so important that we evolve from the place of ignorance to bliss. Yeah. And then turn around and look at yourself and say, look at God. Look at how I've transformed that energy when I used to be chaotic and ignorant. And now look at me in my blissful state of being, you know, now look at me in that same story that I told earlier, I could laugh at, you know, around that person that I thought had my button. I could still have this joy inside of me while talking to them like, <laughs> you thought you had my button. You don't anymore. I graduated from ignorance. Now I'm in bliss. Now I laugh. People on my TikTok tell me, ask me why I be laughing just for nothing. Oh, I'm just laughing because I have joy now. Yeah. <laughs> and I ain't gonna stop my laughing. I ain't gonna stop my smiling. I ain't gonna stop my loving. I ain't gonna stop because it feels so good. And when I'm doing it, I draw things closer to me faster that way. Because now I'm on a higher frequency. Now I can bless others around me with this frequency. I can draw things to me through thought with this frequency. I can have the desires of my heart if I keep steady and ride the current of this frequency here. Yeah. Black women are wonderful in essence. Yes, we are. Divine protection to you. So anyway, that's the video. I'm going to upload that to my YouTube. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's in my link in my bio here on TikTok. And check out my website. I create from scratch natural products. Hair shampoo, deodorant, lotions, body butters, beard oil, and beard shampoo. You men really got to tap into that beard shampoo. Because it's going to make that beard not be brittle and stiff and hard and stuff. You know, ladies don't be wanting the brittle kind of beards, no. So, <laughs> my beard shampoo really, really softens that beard and not have it so brittle. And then I have a great beard oil, rich with real vitamin C. These are real organic citrus fruits that I put in my product. I don't make stuff with toxic ingredients. All of my products are pH balanced and I have a product called BPH balance for the woman's vagina. They work. I was reading some of the um, reviews. They work. I know they're awesome. I know that I was led to make every last one of them during my sleep. Where I get my, where I get my downloads from is where I got my ingredients from to create these from my higher self. So I already know all of it is amazing. So I encourage you, if you did purchase already, please leave an honest review so people could, you know, like some of the reflections, they like to hear other people say that they stuff is really amazing. So if y'all say it's amazing too, <laughs> so, so other people could know that it's amazing. Don't just buy it and feel good and don't tell nobody. Tell people you feel good about it. And if you don't like it, guess what? Post that too. I upload that. I never had a negative review, but all is God, baby. So tell me what you don't like about it, if that's the case. But I teach. Just focus on the good. But I'll take your negative comment to it and I'll show post it on there so other people can read it. And they'll see how you think. Because you create your own reality. It ain't the fact that I'm making it. Because I'm making it. I, I know my intention when I make everything is that I'm just making love. I'm just delivering love to your house. Now you decide how you're going to accept my love. And it's going to be based upon your ability to love. <laughs> it's going to be based upon your habitual thought. See, that's another thing too. You think these placebo effect medications and all these things that you're eating or digesting or whatever you think that's the thing that's supposed to be healing you but if you look at the energy behind it no baby no it was actually your thoughts your thoughts when you purchase your thoughts when you swallowed your thoughts when you put it on your body that's really the true thing because you're god i'm just sending love in a bottle now how you digest that love will be upon you but so far everybody that digests my love is as though it's a healer you see what I'm saying? As though it is nourishment to their skin and their body. So digest it how you want, but I'm just letting you know. 
whether you buy from me or buy from anybody else, whether you take a pill at the hospital or you take a vitamin or you eat healthy or you eat animals all day long. It's your thought that you had while you was doing that thing that made that thing what it became because you're God. You're manipulating the energy. Pamela said, yes, they were. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for that. I believe so. I know so myself. Yes, it is all about um, a belief. You're right. So anyway, I'm about to get because I'm behind on some things with my business and a couple of orders that I got to get out. So anyway, this video was from my heart to yours, baby. Be blessed. Remember, you're God. You can be doing half anything. Go, 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 go get it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>